How can amateur golfers get down to scratch level golf? Well, I'm going to talk about three big issues in this video and try and provide you with some solutions to help you along the way to improve your game. And while you might not get down to a scratch level, you'll at least be able to drop some off your handicap and get a lot closer than you were. Let's get into it. Hey everybody and welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. And today, well, I hope to do just that. The dream of most amateurs is to be able to tell everybody that you are a scratch golfer or at least a low single digit handicapper. But sadly for most of us, that dream will never come true. I'm not trying to be pessimistic and I'm not trying to rain on your parade, but to be brutally honest, most of us lack what scratch golfers have, and it's got nothing to do with talent. Playing golf at a higher level takes an equal level of dedication, which means time needs to be set aside in your daily and weekly life to put in the work to hone your skills. That time can be spent getting lessons, practicing on the range, the short game area, the putting green, and getting real world practice and experience on course. Unless you're retired, you likely have a full-time job, a house, a significant other, kids, a vehicle to take care of, chores, all sorts of things to get in the way. Oh yeah, and a lot of us, we like to get sleep. Ask yourself this question, how often can you practice? How often can you play? Once you have a realistic idea of what you can invest, it'll help you build an accurate set of expectations. If you're practicing once a week and playing once a week, what can you honestly hope to accomplish at that rate? Set realistic expectations based on what you're able to give to the game. One of the things that you're going to need time for is practice. Do you have a place near your home that you can get to in a relatively short amount of time or do you have to drive 30 or 45 minutes to get there one way and then the same 30 or 45 minutes to get back? Does it have a short game area? Can you work on all facets of the game while you're there like putting and chipping and bunker shots and pitch shots and rough shots and all the different scenarios that you're going to encounter on the golf course? If you don't have an area like that where you can work on short game, you're going to have to put in a little bit of work at home. I've got one of these little putt out devices with this track that you have to put through this little gate. You know how impossible it is to get balls to roll through this gate when you start moving it away from the putter head? I mean, it's maddening, but if you can get it down, it will vastly improve your putting stroke and get you to start the ball online with the correct speed. You can do a lot of pitching and chipping in the backyard around your house, maybe even into a net. You can get one of those little putting carpets that you set out inside the house. If it's bad weather, you can still work on your game. And those areas are crucial to scores. And the last resource that I'm going to talk about is money. Ask yourself, how much can you allocate to your game for clubs, balls, greens fees, range balls, memberships, whatever money you have, make sure you spend it wisely. It could be spent on lessons, getting your clubs custom fit, buying a range pass so you can get out there anytime you need to practice and hit golf balls, or just investing in a really great set of wedges that you can use to score better. Golf does not have to be expensive, but it's not free either. Invest your money in the places that will make the most difference in your game. Here's a hint. The latest driver, that's probably not where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Put your money where it will do the most good. The second topic in this video is going to be strategy. Now, there's three parts to the strategy here, and the first one is not what you think it is. It's your bag. This should be of a high level of importance to you as a golfer when you're trying to improve your game. Don't just pick out clubs that you see in other people's bags or what you read that might be a great club. You gotta get out there and try different things and you gotta be willing to get a little bit unconventional. Maybe you think hybrids are for babies or old men, but you really need those hybrids and you could benefit from them. But just because you see a two iron in a pro's bag doesn't mean that it needs to be in your bag. Remember, we are nowhere close to pros. We are trying to get down to a low single digit handicap from the correct tees, of course. Make sure that you put some time and effort and thought into your bag. The first thing you're gonna need is your tee club. It doesn't have to be a driver, but everybody needs a club that they can put into the fairway at least eight out of 10 times and get 200 yards or more out of it. That's it, that's all you need. If you're playing from the correct tees, that is plenty of distance. You just need that tee club probably about 12 to 14 times per round. You can use irons or hybrids for approach shots, but what you're looking for is not just raw distance. You need consistency, 
of distance and flight with proper and even gapping between. These clubs could take you from the fairway to the green or at least close to it as often as possible regardless of what they are. Inside of 100 yards, your bag needs to be built the strongest. Wedges that are bomb proof that work for partial shots and chips as well as full shots. Find wedges that are as predictable as possible and don't be shy about asking a fitter for an education on grinds and bounce. Strategy also is not just about being on course, it's also about how you practice. You need to be using an app or a simple pen and paper to track stats so that you can drill in on areas that are costing you strokes. When you practice, make sure the bulk of your time is spent on these areas. You may need to dedicate entire practice sessions to lag putting or greenside bunkers. No matter what you're practicing, be sure to work on things that you can apply directly to the course. There is no sense in practicing 100 stinger shots out of a bucket of balls that you're never going to use on course or that you don't need to use on course. And the last thing in strategy I'll talk about is, in fact, course management strategy. Now, we've all heard the cliche that golf is a mental game. And a huge part of that mental game is how you make your way around the course. It goes far beyond just choosing a club and picking a target. Scratch golfers tend to look at shots in golf kind of like shots in pool. This shot sets up the next one. Put yourself in a position to have a good look on the next shot and don't limit your options by getting yourself in trouble. It's not easy to think positive while at the same time taking bad results into consideration. Uh, it's going to take mental practice to learn that skill, but it can be done. Even the great Ben Hogan spoke about managing your misses. Remember, par is a very good number. After all, scratch golf is par. Now the third and final thing I want to talk about is the skill set. Scratch golfers have a level of predictability that, that a lot of us can't even comprehend. A lot of this comes from practice, sure, but some of it also comes from not overreaching. They rarely try those hero shots and they aren't swinging as if they're trying to rip the cover off of the golf ball. The best strategy in the world is worthless. If you don't know what shot is coming out of the club, distance is important, sure, but once your shots become erratic, you need to back it down a bit and get the shots to give you results eight out of 10 times like you're looking for. It's not just consistency with your clubs either. You need consistency of effort, planning, the examination of each shot, and how you carry yourself on the course overall. You should be as consistent as you want your clubs to be. You're going to also need some level of discipline to improve and also maintain your skills. The, the need for discipline, it can't be overstated. You know, the end result you want, and it won't be easy to get there, so being stubborn and staying the course is crucial. You also need to be disciplined in how you practice. I mean, how many times do you see bad golfers on the range blasting driver after driver with no real effort to work on the rest of their game? Driver is only used about 14 times on course at the most. The majority of your shots come from inside of 100 yards, so why are you spending so much time banging drivers on the range? It's so easy to fall off the wagon in golf. You lose your resolve, and after working on bunker shots, you're bored after eight of them. Putting from three feet in a circle around the hole until you make 10 in a row can be mind-numbing. Keep your eyes on the goal, buckle down, and keep grinding. It will pay off. Uh, and scoring. Scoring is huge. I mean, scoring is what you want to do. You want to make pars. You want to make birdies. At the end of the day, you need honesty. It's, it's, it's hard to be honest with yourself if you have faulty or incorrect data and feedback. You need to track your stats, either manually or with an app. You need true average yardages, not what you think they are. Because most golfers think about what the shot would have done had they hit it right. But how often do you hit it perfect? Track your stats. Once you're getting true data and your eyes are opening to the reality of golf, ask yourself some questions again. Where am I spending most of my shots? Where am I losing strokes? Am I planning my shots based on realistic yardages for each club in my bag? How many putts do I have? How often do I get up and down for par? If you have some penalty strokes from OB off the tee, work on improving your tee shots. Or what about this? Consider making a strategy change. Try different shots off of the tee rather than just going driver immediately as some sort of reflex. How many greens do you miss when you're 100 to 150 yards out? Are you hitting at least 50% of those greens? If not, 
you need to work on that. What's your scrambling percentage? It's probably less than 50%. It may even be less than 25%. You need to work on it. The average handicap for golfers out there in the amateur world is about 18 strokes. That's 18 strokes between you and scratch golf. And that doesn't even include the six foot gimmies that you're taking or the stroke that you didn't count on 12 because you know where that ball landed. When you got down there, you just couldn't find it. And you didn't count that stroke either. It's so easy to add strokes to your card as you know, but it's much more difficult to take strokes away. It won't happen without hard work. Make it a point to do a thorough assessment of your resources, strategies, and skills. Define what you have to work with as far as time and money and create a plan that at least gets you moving in the right direction. Have a plan for your practice and your play on course. Never go out and just wing it. And work on developing the skills you'll need to create more predictable shots to get you to the scoring zone. Then focus on capitalizing when you get there by grinding out your short game and putting. This is almost certainly where you're losing the most strokes, even if you don't feel like it. Most of us will never get to scratch, even with a solid effort, time, and discipline. But maybe in your attempt, you could get much closer than you were. It all starts with a dream. It takes time, it takes planning, it takes discipline, hard work to get to those goals in order to make that dream a reality.